Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This week is Disassembly Week. I'll be stripping down my fat bike. For people that don't know, this bike was the start of my journey down the rabbit hole of electric bikes and DIY conversions. Back in 2018, this started life as a stock BBS HD. Over the years, it was modified with the back 800 and increased in power to 3.5 kilowatts and 72 volts. This bike has been through five Canadian winters of riding with very little maintenance. It's definitely due a full service. I'm really curious to see how well components have held up, particularly the motor. So I'm gonna strip down the bike and I'll stop and show things that I think might be interesting, but I'm not gonna do a blow by blow. There are lots of way better videos on bike mechanics and every bike is different anyway. So one of the first things I've noticed as I've taken all this, uh, all this wiring and zip ties apart is how tight I actually um, crimped these on when I first did the first bike. Actually, it's not the first run of wiring, but certainly how tight I crimped this on. And you can see how it's, um, you can see how it's bitten in to this casing. And I didn't have any um, errors with this bike or problems with it, but this is exactly how these wires get damaged. They get pinched in really tight like that. And any kind of pull on that wire from that point generally leads to fracturing and then you get errors and stuff with your, uh, with your controller. So I've been paying attention to all of these high-go connectors and I've not noticed any issues with them with any water or anything getting in there or any debris or discoloration on the pins. Um, I have noticed that some of these, like this one, it could just kind of came apart with not, there wasn't much pop left in them. So I don't know if gradually over the years as they get, you know, freezing and cold and all that kind of thing. And if, if some of the initial sort of tightness of these does start to, does start to go, but, um, no issues so far with any of the high-go connectors. So I've got the bolts out and uh, the silicon is doing a pretty amazing job of keeping this still stuck in position. So I'm going to get that gently apart there. But I've got pretty high hopes for what's behind here, if that's uh, how good a job it, it's still doing. So I'm actually really pleased to see inside here. Um, it looks great. There's nothing, nothing inside here at all. Um, you can still see every, intact. This can get be a bugger, I think, to get out, but still intact is the uh, is the liquid electrical tape that I put over the the hall sensor. Um, I use silicon, silicone all the way around these, which did a really nice job of keeping this uh, this all sealed up. Um, these still look great. There's no issues with any of the connectors um, that I put the, the heat shrink around to protect. Um, this all still looks really good. Um, this is the Halls one. In fact, it's actually going to be a shame to sort of discombobulate all of this, um, but I'm going to have to do it to take, take the controller and stuff off. I'm actually having real trouble getting this, uh, this Halls plug out because the, uh, the dried electrical stuff sort of bakes hard. Um, and I don't want to damage the JST underneath. So I think I'm going to take this motor off with that still on and figure it out figure it out elsewhere, um, get more light. These um, plugs, there's no discoloration. Um, these are still fine. You can still see the dielectric grease that I put on originally. Um, so they seem to have done very well. There is some dirt and debris in the back of here, um, but it doesn't look like there's any any discolorization so far. Um, I'll get all this out and we can have a have a proper look underneath here. But um, it doesn't look too bad, even though it wasn't actually fully, fully sealed at the back. So although it looked a little bit dirty on the outside, on the inside, it's absolutely perfect. There's no discolorization, which means the dielectric grease and all the extra wrapping and care did its job. I had thought I might have a bit of trouble with this nut here, but... Um, Using this long breaker bar uh, has just made it really, really easy to get enough purchase. So this is coming off, coming off really quite nicely now. Uh, pull the motor off, and uh, hopefully then I can get that JST plug out. If you notice on on this side, I actually used a spacer um, before the lock nut, um, and that's to get this um, space here where there's no threads, so it could start bolting on. Uh, it's very important you use the spacers this side and not on that side because this is the plate that bites into the frame. 
So this is the steel plate with its ridges. And then you can see the corresponding marks that have bitten into the frame. And you can tell I got this perfectly flush because there are the same marks all the way around, which means this ring was in perfect contact with this. And the big little divots in there is where it bit into the frame. And this is why by putting it on with 90 foot pounds uh, into this aluminum frame, it never came loose once. Um, and when I put this back on, they'll settle in to the same spots and it's not gonna come loose again either. And here she is, um, pretty dirty in the parts that it's you know really hard to clean without blasting some pressure washer and stuff in, but um, not that it's gonna affect anything there. On this side, I did notice there is a little bit of a rust um, forming here, and I'm not sure if that rust is on the metal there or if it's just because uh, this one space, it looks particularly rusty, but um, I'm using two spaces on this side and that was to get the, uh, the, the clearance around the chain stays. Uh, which you generally have to do with, with a fat bike. The thing that's actually proven the most tricky was undoing all of the work that I'd done. Like um, the silicone around the controller held it unbelievably fast in that place. And this, getting this stuff off is a pain in the butt. I mean, it kept everything clean and locked in, but still pain in the butt. The biggest pain in the butt is this liquid electrical tape and it's all kind of dried around the, the hall's plug. And I'm gonna to have to be very careful to get that out without without damaging something. Um, I would not recommend um, doing that on yours. So I did get it out. Uh, it was a pain in the butt. Um, I mean, overall, maybe I went a little bit over the top on waterproofing everything with the uh, with the external controller. But I mean, on the other hand, like, I also didn't run into any problems during my time as well. So probably on the balance of things, it was worth it. But yeah, skip out on the liquid electrical tape because there, there are better ways to do it. Even, even silicone's better than that. So I'm not gonna go into, in this video, um, taking apart the actual motor. I'm gonna save that for a follow-up um, pretty soon because I wanna get working on this bike. Um, I wanna get it all cleaned up because um, it's mucky, I'm a bit mucky. Um, have a look at the back wheel. Um, definitely going to need to do something about this. There, you can see, you can see the sharking on the uh, on the big gear now. So it is time to uh, to change that out. Give the uh, give the free hubber service uh, or the free wheeler service, everything like that. Um, tires worked out great. Love these tires. They did uh, they did really really well. Uh, I'm going to put a bigger uh, or a better front brake disc on. Uh, I'm going to go with the Magura floating point um, and upgrade the uh, the size of the front brake. Um, get this frame all cleaned up. I do actually want to try painting the frame actually because I never did like the white. Um, I really wanted the black one, but the, they weren't available. So I'm gonna get all this crap cleaned up off here, service everything, including the rear mat, um, replace that if I need to. Um, but yeah, get everything stripped down and then get this bike rebuilt with the high voltage upgrade kit. So yeah, that's my fat bike and we're gonna get it refreshed and back on the road. Um, hopefully within uh, within a couple of weeks, maybe a bit longer. Depends if I paint the frame or not. Anyway, thanks for watching, and especially those that support the channel directly. It's uh, very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Cheers.